uh, you know, I know in, in clothing manufacturing, China and the Far East used to be a big word. Can you just talk for a, a couple moments about, you know, what causes some companies who may have gone to China um, to come back stateside? And I think that, you, you know, you're seeing that in your business now. Mm -hmm. um, just talk for a, a couple of the reasons why that's happening. Well, uh, first of all, it's, it's a myth that China has been the cheapest place. They haven't been for a long time the cheapest place to manufacture. They had been the most convenient because the Chinese uh, government and people had to be able to subsist uh, vertically by themselves and make everything for their own people, which means the fabric, the lining, the buttons, zippers, everything had to be made there so their country could exist. That made it easy for someone to go into that country because all the supplies were there already, so it was, it was kind of easier. What, the places that are cheaper than the U.S., are cheaper than China, are uh, uh, Vietnam was cheaper, and also Bangladesh happens to be one of the cheapest places, and their wages are very low, and clothing tends to find the lowest price, you know, chase the lowest price in the, on the planet. Uh, because it's a relatively low-skilled job, and if somebody can make the investment in equipment, uh, that's where the production is going to go. The considerations I was talking about before, the length of delivery time in the supply chain, if you can save money, and, you can, and one can save money by sourcing in the Far East and get cheaper prices, it pays when you are doing full container loads, and you have a four- to six-month lead time. If you are not making those quantities, and if one does not have that lead time, you have to consider what the additional cost is. The example I like to use is if you're going to order sweaters, let's say, and you need to order them in May for delivery for Christmas selling, which would be, let's say, October, or you know, four to six months out, and you order red and blue sweaters, and the sweaters come in and the red ones are selling, the blue ones are not, you can't get more red sweaters for another four months, and you are stuck with the blue sweaters you got. If we manufacture in this hemisphere, we have the opportunity for a quick turn situations, which means your investment would be in raw materials, but you don't cut the particular colors or sizes that you need until the last minute. Nobody can predict with 100% accuracy what your perfect inventory is going to be because you can't predict your demand and what your clients are going to request from your inventory, no matter how much money you have. So you still have to supply them with whatever colors or sizes they need. So if you're sitting with raw materials and you could turn that production and have a finished garment in a few weeks versus a few months, that's a big deal. So the question is, you may be paying more for the production here in the USA, but what is that really worth if you can get another turn on your inventory as a retailer or you can service your client, particularly in the uniform industry, if somebody's opening a restaurant they're not going to wait for your uniforms for four months before they open up so that, you know, what is the value of that? And people wind up paying air freight from the Far East because they're late on things. And mistakes happen all over the place, you know, why people are late and uh, you have to make allowances for that. So. And not only would I imagine, you know, similar time zones, language barriers, things like that, you know, we also talk to, for the most part, about when you're already in production. But prototyping and before you start manufacturing is a whole different process. I know that you, sometimes you get, you know, prototypes from other countries, specifically China, that may just not work manufacturing for your clients. Right. It, there's a continual process of testing, and even assuming that people are trying to do the proper job and give the, the correct specifications and all the materials that you want, there's changes that happen all the time, and a garment can be rejected because the label is not printed properly. So. Anytime there's a change, you really need to test uh, the assumptions and make sure that you're getting the product and everybody's on the same page. I was going to say something about, um, oh, as far as dealing in time zones, that's an important consideration. It's a stress factor. While obviously it's cheaper in Bangladesh and, and to work in the Far East, Cambodia, China, Indonesia, if you speak to the people who are actually doing this work, Many times they spend hours at night in the early morning hours communicating. Otherwise, they have a delay of like 12 hours before they can talk to somebody. So it's like somebody working on a night shift. You know, it's, it's part of the job, et cetera. But what is the, um, the actual cost of that in, in terms of human energy? Gotcha.